In this final unit, we're going to discuss Hyper-V, which is the uh, virtual machine platform for Windows Server. <clears throat> so our objectives in this unit, we're going to talk about how to install Hyper-V, uh, which is basically a role, just like many of the other things that we installed in this course. We're going to talk about how to create a VM and how to manage or use a VM. And then I'll talk about virtual networks and virtual hard disks, which are important for VMs and how to use those. And then finally, we're going to talk about how to manage and configure virtual machines. So first, let's get started with how to install uh, Hyper-V, which is a role in Windows Server. However, before we talk about uh, how to install it, uh, first let's talk about some of the vernacular with, um, with uh, uh, Hyper-V or with virtualization in general. So when we talk about virtualization, um, first, we have a virtual machine, which is the virtual environment that enables a physical computer's hardware and BIOS. So basically allows us to run a machine within our machine. I think most of you are probably familiar with the concept of a virtual machine. Uh, in When we have a virtual machine, the machine that's running virtually is our guest operating system. So that's the machine that's running um, within a host operating system. And the host computer is hosting our VMs. So whenever we talk about a ghost operating system, we're talking about that guest machine that we're running within a uh, virtual machine. Uh, virtualization software is the software for creating and managing our VMs. Um, so that's, for example, Hyper-V. There are lots of other types of um, virtualization platforms out there. So Hyper-V is certainly one option. Uh, there's also things like uh, VirtualBox, VMware, and there are other, some, uh, other uh, commercial applications as well, uh, which we really don't talk too much about in this course. Uh, because Hyper-V is the product that's offered through Microsoft with Microsoft Windows. So continuing with our terms, the hypervisor is the actual um, software that allows you to virtualize your hardware for a virtual machine. And there are two types of, virtual, of hypervisors. There's a Type 1 hypervisor and a Type 2. The basic difference between these two, a, a Type 1 hypervisor is... Well, let me just let me take a step back. A Type 2 hypervisor is what Hyper-V is. Hyper-V is basically a Type 2 hypervisor. It's, um, it's where the hypervisor is software running within the, uh, the host operating system. A Type 1 hypervisor is where the hypervisor is the operating system on the host machine. So a lot of the high-end enterprise virtualization platforms, VMware is probably the perfect example, something like ESXi, uh, they were... You know, there's a couple different names for it, but but that's an example of a hyper a type one hypervisor. It's the hypervisor is actually the operating system, so there's very little overhead. In fact, you don't really use the operating system on those types of platforms. The only purpose of the operating system is to host the virtual machines, and that's it. Uh, so they're very efficient. Um, you know, they're they're good at what they do. That's pretty much all they do. Whereas a Type 2 hypervisor runs within the operating system. Now you can use uh, VMware. VMware has products that can run as a Type 2 hypervisor where you know, you can install the hypervisor as a software in Microsoft Windows or in a Linux machine or even Mac. Uh, but those are a Type 2 hypervisor because the hypervisor is just an application running within the machine along with all the other software uh, and the operating system. So a virtual disk is basically all the files that make up the virtual machine's hard drive. So rather than being a physical piece of hardware in a VM, uh, it's a, it, the, the hard drive is represented or abstracted as a, uh, as a file on disk or a group of files. The virtual network is the network configuration created by the virtualization software. So basically the hypervisor's job is to virtualize the hardware for your virtual machine. And one of the important things it has to virtualize is the network. Um, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but usually we call that software-defined networking when we talk about that for virtualization. And finally, a checkpoint is a partial copy of a VM made at a particular moment. Uh, in some, some platforms would call that a snapshot, so you might hear the term snapshot. Um, but basically, it's, a, it's a, sort of a capturing a virtual machine at a point in time, more or less. So this is conceptually what a um, what Windows Hyper-V uh, looks like from a from a conceptual point of view. You have the host computer hardware, and then within that hardware you have the Hyper-V hypervisor, uh, and then you have the uh, the various guest machines running within that hypervisor. Um, it's important to note that Hyper-V is a Type Two hypervisor. Uh, some people argue that it's a Type One hypervisor because it's a core part of the operating system. Uh, you know, it's a role within the operating system, but I would argue that it's really not a type two because you can use your server for many other things in addition to being a, uh, a virtual machine host. Uh, 
So um, although, you know, the, the line gets a little bit blurry with Windows because it is part of the operating system. So to install Hyper-V, basically uh, the, your system requirements to install it, basically the same as standard or data center edition. Uh, however, uh, you're going to want to make sure you add uh, uh, sufficient RAM to handle all of the virtual machines. So each of your virtual machines is going to require RAM. It has minimum specifications. So you have to add up the minimum specifications of your virtual machines and add that to the minimum specifications for Microsoft Windows. And that's the minimum requirement. Of course, we usually don't go with the minimum requirement. We usually step it up a little bit, but, uh, but th that would be your minimum requirement. Um, the CPU has to support data execution prevention, or DEP, uh, which, is, uh, um, which is a feature in Microsoft Windows that you can turn on and off. Uh, you have to have enough free disk space to hold the operating system you're going to install, so you have to have a large enough space uh, for these virtual machine files, the virtual disk files, and of course enough RAM, as I mentioned earlier. So first, once we make sure we have the correct, um, uh, the correct hardware requirements, the next step is to look at our licensing. So Windows Server 2012 R2 with Hyper-V includes licenses for virtual instances of Windows Server. Um, basically, if you have Windows uh, Standard Edition of Microsoft Windows Server 2012, you have up to one license to run one virtual machine within that host operating system. So with Standard, uh, when, once you install the Hyper-V role, with Standard, you can have one virtual machine running Windows, um, uh, running Windows Server 2012. I believe you can have additional virtual machines that are running other operating systems, uh, but from a licensing perspective, you can have one other um, one other instance of, of of Server 2012 running. If you step up to Data Center Edition, that has unlimited virtual instances of Windows Server 2012. You're limited only by your hardware when you use Data Center Edition. So when you have Data Center Edition, you'll be able to spin up as many virtual machines as you like, based on how much uh, or how many you know your hardware resources, you know what you can handle, how much RAM hard drive space and so forth. But you could build a pretty, uh, um, you know, a pretty, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, <laughs> a pretty uh, high-end virtualization platform with uh, Windows running Hyper-V uh, with, the, you know, because there's very few limitations with data center, um, other than the hardware, of course. Okay, so creating a virtual machine. So once you install the role, which you'll do like just, you know, with all the other roles that we installed in this course, now, once the role is installed in Hyper-V Manager, um, all the tasks that relate to creating and managing your VMs are going to be in the Actions pane, which you'll find on the left-hand side. Um, so the Hyper-V VMs consist of these files stored in the Hyper-V server. You have the configuration file and the virtual hard disk file. So when you create your VM, whatever path you create it in, so you're going to create a folder for your VM. And when you look in that folder, you will find a configuration file, which has the information about the virtual machine, and you'll have the virtual hard disk file. In addition, you'll also find the following types of files. You'll have the difference in your checkpoint files, which we talked about earlier, the checkpoint, uh, you know, which is sort of a snapshot in time, uh, the save state files. And again, that won't happen until after you begin running your virtual machine. So to create the virtual machine, first you're going to start the new virtual machine wizard in Hyper-V. Uh, so it's a wizard. It's not complicated. Uh, I think uh, you could do this in the lab if you wanted to. Give the new VM a descriptive name so you know what it is. Choose a location to store it. So this is the path where it's going to store its uh, its virtual disk file. You're going to choose a, um, a Generation 1 or Generation 2 VM. We'll talk about the difference between those two in just a few minutes. Assign the amount of memory that you want to allow that VM to use. You could always change it later if you wanted to. You're going to configure the networking. So there's some options for networking. Uh, so for example, you can have it so that your VM uh, cannot access the network. You can have it where it accesses the network independent of the host operating system, or you can have it NATed through the host operating system. So a variety of options. Uh, you're going to create the virtual hard disk, and then you're going to install the operating system. So pretty straightforward. Uh, so a running VM does not require using Hyper-V Manager. In other words, once your, once your VM is running, you can access it just like you could access any other virtual machine. So you could access it by um, by going into uh, the, the the VM manager and clicking connect. You could double click on the VM. You could select the VM and double click its screenshot. Uh, select the VM and click connect in the action menu. You could even just RDP directly to that machine, uh, just like you would any other computer. Uh, so you just RDP to it. Of course, you know the the keyboard, monitor, and mouse is what's on the host operating system. Um, but all of the remote access tools that you might use with a, with a standard system would apply here. In fact, if you spin up your virtual machine running core, you can connect to it with your management tools just like you would with any other virtual or any other 
uh, Windows Server. So really, it's not a whole lot different than running a physical machine. So the Virtual Machine Connection Console has some toolbar icons. You can uh, So once you're in the Virtual Machine uh, with the console, you can send control alt delete. Uh, obviously, if you try to do that on the keyboard, uh, it might work with the VM, but it's also going to send control alt delete to the host operating system, which you may not want to do. So you can use the button to send that. You can start the VM. You could turn off the VM. You can shut down the VM. So turning off and shutting down are a little bit different. Turning off just shuts it off, where doing a shutdown sends the signal to the operating system to perform a clean shutdown, which is obviously a little bit better. Save states the current uh, saves the current state of the VM. So it takes a snapshot at that current time so that when you uh, want to start it up later, it'll start it up exactly where you left it off. Um, you can pause the VM. You can reset it, which is just like hitting the reset button on a standard computer. Um, or you can create a checkpoint of a VM, which is sort of a snapshot in time. So the basic virtual machine connection console has some uh, a couple more uh, icons. I should have put these on the previous slide, but revert will revert to a previous checkpoint. And session mode changes to uh, changes the uh, session mode. So some tasks you can perform with other menus. You can with file. You can access the settings. You can exit the VM. Uh, you can with media. You can mount ISO files. Uh, maybe if you want to do an install or if you want to mount an ISO from a CD-ROM drive or something like that, um, you know, or mount something as if it were a CD-ROM drive. You can uh, use the clipboard to copy back and forth between the uh, so you can copy between your host and the guest operating system. Uh, and you can toggle the display of the toolbar. So you can turn the toolbar off and off if you need to get it out of your way. A lot of times when we're using VMs, you need a little bit more screen real estate when you're uh, trying to manage your VM. So some advanced VM creation methods. Uh, so there's other methods other than the virtual machine wizard. Uh, you can import uh, a VM that you exported from another uh, server. Um, you could copy the virtual disk and you can import it that way. So you could just take a virtual disk that was running on a different machine and you can you can spin that up on a new machine. You convert the physical machine to a virtual machine. So if you have a physical server that you want to turn into a VM, there are tools you can use to do that. So you can convert something to a physical or to a to a virtual machine. Uh, if you want to export, um, so VMs can be exported and imported to create more VMs. Um, so you can back up your VM without even shutting it down. You can export a VM while it's running. So you can export it to another server, for example. And after it's exported, you can move it to archival storage as a backup, or you can import it to another Hyper-V server and begin using that on another Hyper-V server. So you get a lot of flexibility when you're using virtualization. Uh, so if you want to import with uh, Windows 2012, you can import a VM that hasn't been exported first if you want to. Uh, if your Hyper-V host offer, uh, suffers a hardware failure, for example, you might just have the uh, virtual disk file. So in other words, if you have um, a virtual disk file from Hyper-V, you don't have to import it. You know, you don't have to first export it. You could just take a virtual disk file at any point in time and you can mount it to a new uh, to a new hypervisor and you can spin that up on a new machine if you wanted to, which is good if you have a hardware failure, as I said before. So there's three options for the import. You can register the virtual machine in place, you can restore the virtual machine, or you can copy the virtual machine. If you're familiar with other virtualization platforms, the, uh, the, the features and the way that this works it has been sort of normalized to work very similar to other virtualization platforms like VMware and VirtualBox. They pretty much work the same way. So the result of a copy is similar to an export, uh, but the procedure is a little bit different. You're going to copy the virtual hard disk from an existing VM to a new folder, and you're going to rename the copied file. Then you create a VM in the new virtual machine wizard, um, but in the connect virtual hard disk window, select use an existing virtual disk option. And then you finish the new virtual machine wizard, and you'll be good to go. You'll have a copy of that virtual machine. So in other words, if you want to take a machine that you built uh, and just make a, a copy of it to run another copy of it, a lot of times what we'll do is, is we'll build a machine and baseline it to our standard. And it's a little bit easier just to make a copy of that machine when we need new machines. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll build a machine to an image that I know is something that I'm going to uh, use over and over again. And I keep a backup, and then every time I need a new virtual machine, I just copy that uh, file, and I create my new machines from that file. So it's relatively quick to spin up new virtual machines. And again, this, this works the same way in VMware or VirtualBox and many of the other platforms that, uh, uh, that we can use for virtualization. You can also convert a physical machine to a VM. So Hyper-V has no built-in tools to do this, uh, but there are some other tools available. Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager uh, and there's a free utility called disk to VHD that you can download that will create the VHD file uh, 
from a hard drive. Uh, so you can basically create your VM from a physical server. And that's useful if you're trying to migrate physical servers to VMs, uh, which, uh, you know, a lot of times if we're moving to a virtualized data center, uh, that might be something that's useful for you to, to, to convert these rather than having to reinstall the platforms. You can create and manage VMs with the PowerShell as well. So there's commandlets that you can use, just like many of the other features that we've spoken about in this course. So you can create a PowerShell script to automate uh, VM management. Um, you can, uh, you know, when you're in the commandlet, you can get the use the help commands to see what's available for VMs. So you can use get command dash VM to see all the different options that are available. So when you're creating a new VM, uh, I mentioned earlier that you have the option of using generation one or generation two VMs. So generation two VMs have enhanced capabilities. So they support some newer standards. For example, um, you know, BIOS was sort of the, the old way of doing firmware, but now we have UEFI. So um, generation two VMs will natively support UEFI, which is a little bit better. Uh, they have better device support. Um, generation two has the ability to do network boot with IPv6, which we talked about earlier. We've talked about IPv6. We haven't really talked much about network boot in this course, um, but with Microsoft Windows, you do have the ability to boot uh, from a uh, from an image over the network to either install Windows or um, uh, for for using remote desktop and things like that for virtual desktops. Um, so it does support that. Uh, it has VHDX uh, only support GPT which is uh, um, basically a partition table um, for running multiple operating systems and things like that. Disk expansion, reduced attack uh, surface, that should say attack, not attached surface, uh, secure boot. Um, so you can convert a generation one to a generation two. So if you have a VHD file that was created as a generation one VM, you can uh, up convert that to a generation two in 2012 with Hyper-V. Okay, so Hyper-V Virtual Networks, I'm going to talk about this in our next slide deck.